uh, Jelly Roll was the star of the show. Yeah, Jelly Roll and Bert. I really didn't see Jelly Roll. I I, Bert, I ran by them. I smacked your ass when you were walking with them, but I I, I just saw them quick. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, you did? Yeah. Smack somebody's ass. I was gonna say <laughs> you didn't smack my ass, bro. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I smacked your ass. I don't think you did. I remember when you came, walked by us, came by us. Well, okay, let's change this thing. I sexually assaulted somebody on the race today. <laughs> It's another edition of KFC Radio. Uh, me and Jackie are on the same floor, and as we we were the last couple on the elevator going up, and she goes, "Did you get a suite?" And I was like, "No," and she was like, "Oh, funny, weird, funny, <laughs> weird. That's weird." And I was like, no, he's "I was like, uh, what?" And she was like, oh, "And then a, as we were walking down the hallway, the maid was there, so one of the doors was open, and I, I walked by and I caught a glimpse of what looked like a big room, and I go, "Oh, one like that," and she goes, "Bigger." <laughs> it's bullshit and then i walk in and she's got a whole it's an apartment bro. Yeah, there's a door crazy. she has a bedroom in her apartment in in her hotel room uh we're so we're sitting here in jackie's kitchen i think she's gonna cook dinner maybe or something jesus christ uh so new locale for the our second la episode it's, it's la week we seem to do la once a year and this was kind of an impromptu one but LA week, a couple pods from the West Coast. Um, so Sunday night was Brady Roast. We broke all that down. Uh, John was chilling with Alonzo Morning and all the superstars. Uh, and then... Uh, Who is Alonzo Bodden, by the way? Comedian. Well, when we got the full story, it made more sense. Yeah. Black comedian named Alonzo and Bodden Morning. It wasn't, you know, like, I, I could understand. I, I would, like, people were talking, like, someone was just like, that's Alonzo I, I honestly, I still it. think I was told it was Alonzo Morning. I still think someone else misheard and then told me that, but I'm not positive. They might it's have said Alonzo Morning. It's just so Bodden. funny knowing who. I, mean, I had many people reach out to me being like, I spit out my coffee with that John story. <laughs> like, it's just. It's just a very funny person to be very wrong about. <laughs> Alonzo Morning was murdering at the comedy Bro, club. I texted like I texted multiple people. I texted you and Nate. Like, yeah, oh, Alonzo Morning is so goddamn funny. <laughs> I so go check out Alonzo Morning. He's very fucking funny. Yeah, <laughs> I guess. Yeah, shout out to him. It's very good. Uh, and then we continued our LA trip uh, to last night was the premiere of Shane's new show. Well, not new Before show. Before that, even, I want to say, we went to just like a regular bar and just watched the Bruins and uh, the Great Knicks. Pick. Great pick. Great bar. bar. Yeah. We ended up bar. going to, uh, we we're, our, our hotel is in West Hollywood. We are in, right, West Hollywood or no? Hollywood. Uh, North Hollywood. North Hollywood. We are, but we are in like the Times Square of LA. And so when you walk out of our, uh, our hotel, it is very Walk of Fame, uh, weird tchotchke and, and souvenir shops. But we went like two blocks as far as we need, like further than we needed to. And we got an uh, Irish bar, basically, that was, it was perfect. Like great, one of the better sports bars salad. I've been to in a long time. Like, I feel like sports bars. I mean, maybe I'm just old and washed and I haven't been out on the scene much anymore. But there was like sports bars and then they all kind of became lounges and yeah, shit like oh, that. Yeah, very this much was so. just like a sports bar with 30 TVs. Yeah. I had really good uh, Buffalo wings. Like really, yeah. it was just like, oh, this is what I want. And yeah, we were watching Knicks and Bruins. But that was, it was cool watching it with the Knicks guys. Like you guys are the Knicks. I was kind of saying this in the car last night. We were uh, with Stavi and I was saying that like, I'm not a basketball guy. Yeah. I don't, you know, yeah. I, I, Root for the Boston Celtics. I want the Boston Celtics to win a championship every year. But I don't follow the sport that closely. And I was like, I've heard so many stories in my life about how when the Knicks are good, the city's different mm -hmm. and like people care more and all that stuff. And it's true. Yep. It is kind of infectious and it's cool. I, you know, I hope the Celtics kick the fucking shit out of you guys. But like, <laughs> it's cool to see. I think if it, I think you know, the Celtics are leaps and bounds above everybody. But I just feel like that shit kind of goes out the window when you make it to the Eastern Conference Finals. It's like. I don't know. Both these teams have been fucking going through it. Like, I don't care about your regular season record anymore, yeah, you know? Yeah. But yeah, I mean, it is, uh, for me, it's like a return, uh, having grown up, like, watching them. And even like you guys took over the bar. 
Yeah, we yeah and we were getting, we were walking. Were high, I've yeah. been fucking <laughs> doing that, by the way. I've gone out to a bar for every single Knicks game, and I have absolutely caused a scene every single time. <laughs> Stuff I didn't know. Well, it was there. also I mean it was madness. Yeah, the last yeah, yeah. the last minute, the last yeah, thirty yeah, seconds yeah. was like hectic mm. and crazy, and we were high fiving and no, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. oh, oh. You oh. getting like head turns from people at the bar, and I was like, you're at a yeah. fucking sports I bar mean, give me a fucking break. Yeah, because I am, I'm a, I am like, what's the school in Arrested Development? Um, where school? Yeah, where uh, Buster went. Where children should be seen, not neither seen not nor heard. heard or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like that's how I live my life. Like I, I try and pretty quietly watch, it, but like so, like I then judge people who are loud. Yeah. And even in that, I was like, this is fucking. If you're upset about this, you're fucking nuts. I mean, the sport, the, the game was on loud. Like the yeah. music, yeah. The, the the broadcast. By the way, as we're watching, the Bruins are fucking dominating. It was a fun little, fun little yeah, afternoon. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, but yeah, it's been it's been like a fun uh, return for me to like, uh, you know, what like playoff basketball to me is very stressful because like every possession matters, and when you don't score or you turn the ball over, it's like oh fuck. <laughs> and in the modern day where everyone's hitting threes, it's like no lead is 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 good enough. But it is, and there really is just such a difference of like when everybody is rooting together. Yeah, because usually yeah. there's you know two people they're on opposite sides and they're fighting even though they're from New York. So everyone getting together is always makes is a big X factor. This bar it, though, it also I just want to say too, it was the it's the first time I've liked West Coast time. Like it, it, where, it ended up working out well, but there was a moment where I was like, oh, we got things to do, and it's a 4.30 start. We're not going to be able to finish the game. But in hindsight, it actually worked out perfect. It, where it, it was like, was, games are done, and now we can go do our social thing for the night. Kinda, yeah, it's kind of crazy to get to watch a, 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 a full playoff, playoff game, game, and then your night starts. Yeah. It's insane. But it could also ruin a night. Like, if the Knicks lost, I would have like been, yeah, been, been, been around and the shit. whole night. Yeah, but if you go yeah. win, and then you have the whole night ahead of you, that's fucking awesome. Well, what's crazy is like... Like baseball is where it really gets nuts. Like if you're watching a ba- your baseball team every, if you're if you're a Mets fan on the West Coast, like you got to watch like, and you want to watch every game. You're watching games at four o'clock yeah. every day, dude. And when, then when they're when they're like, when they're West Coast, when they're West Coast, that's probably late for you, you know, because you're like, oh my god, I got, the game starts at seven tonight. Because I'm usually watching it at a four, you know. It's it's just I, I when I was I'm sure in there's London, ups and downs, but I couldn't. I don't know how to handle. It. I can't do it. I'm too East Coast. When I was in London, it was during the MLB playoffs, and I woke up in the morning, and the Dodgers and Padres were playing still, and I was like, "What the <laughs> fuck?" It, like they'd gone Wake, to extras and stuff like that. Up to a <laughs> playoff baseball game is like, wild. Is this, is this live right now? <laughs> <laughs> I was like checking Twitter, and people were tweeting about it. Like this game's on right now. March Madness. I'm about to is... go eat beans for breakfast, and baseball's on. <laughs> Base uh, March Madness. This is one too if you're on the West Coast because games tip off at nine. And I remember waking up being like, "All right, we gotta go drinking and <laughs> like we gotta go watch twelve hours of basketball." Um, the bar we went to though, we'll talk more about the rest of what we did in our LA trip. But the bar we went to, we, we linked up with Frank, good old Francis. Uh, Francis was out here for the premiere uh, with Shane as well, but we we linked up with him to go to the bar first. And like we said, it's very much a sports bar. And it was happy hour. And they said, uh, here's the deal. You, you get, you order, buy one, get one. But they both come out at the same time. And that's kind of the gimmick is like you, you have to have your multiple drinks. I'm sure it makes people fly through them yeah. and, and, and spend more money. But I'm like, all right, Bud Light, two for me. You guys got something on tap, two of those. Francis orders his patented trademark move, uh, Rye Manhattan. <laughs> Rye Manhattan Martini. They come over and they're like, we're sorry, we only have one martini glass, so we can't bring you both of them. And at, actually, at, right after Francis ordered, I was like, that's kind of a bold order right now. And he's like, yeah, what am I going to do? He's like, I'm about to have like five to six shots of whiskey just sitting in front of me <laughs> while one of these glasses undoubtedly goes warm, and then I definitely won't want it. <laughs> so they come over, they're like, we only have one martini glass. And he's like, well, how about we do this? How about I just drink this one? And then you bring, I'll give you that cup back. And you can make me it in that. And they were like, okay, all right, sounds good. The manager ends up coming over being like, we used to have six of these. That was so funny. Goes, we used to have about six glasses. Now, I don't know what happened. It was Cinco de Mayo. Maybe they broke them all. I was like, were people just smashing martini glasses here? What are you guys talking about? But watching Francis do his 
just Francis, you know, trying to like be so overly polite and, and proper while they're talking about what to put his rye Manhattan in while we're just here to watch the fucking game. <laughs> and he's got the one martini glass in the house. It was just such, it was, I felt like I was watching a, a episode of Curb or something. It was such a goddamn scene. I was like, only you, Francis. How about you just get a Bud Light and shut the fuck up, man? <laughs> but yeah, we were there for uh, the premiere of Tires, Shane's. Shane uh, McKeever and Steve Gerben. Gerben's uh, show that if you if you are in the po- comedy podcast world and you follow all the podcasts, particularly Shane, follow the comics, you know about Tires. Tires is like this almost like 10 year old pilot. Yeah. yeah. It's been on YouTube. And uh, obviously once Shane exploded, I'm, I think Netflix was like. What else do you got for us? And I'm sure they were like, well, we do have this pilot already shot that, uh, you know, it's a, it's a great idea. It's basically just about, you know, guys working in a tire. What do you call that? A tire store? Tire. Auto mechanic <laughs> shop. Tire. You know, whatever that is. Um, it's a true story. Mm-hmm. Gerben, right, it's Gerben's, Gerben's dad, dad actually owns a Valley Forge. Valley Forge auto mechanic shop. And uh, so they premiered it at a theater. It's, it's, a, it's not a true story, but... It's, it's 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 roots and truth. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. Jackie, what would you like? Pass his attention for? Why do you guys act? <laughs> why do you guys Jackie's act like just sometimes snapping? It, like we can't yeah. see it or hear it or anything. <laughs> why do you guys act though, like this show? Like you can't interrupt it. Like <laughs> like when you tried to hold up your phone with words on it the other day. I was like, just fucking say yeah. it, dude. Uh, so Francis was in the the first two episodes. Great. Great appearance by him. But it was he, it was incredible. It's it was really, dude. It's I think it's going to be of a, a very successful show. You take you know, take our, our opinions with a grain of salt because we was like a friends and family room. I think that, I think there were some people who got tickets, but it was largely our friends and whatever they called it. I forget, but like I haven't been in the theater that laughed that hard in a long time for, for a uh, since Austin Powers two came out. <laughs> How, for real uh, though, hard, it's kind of heard the theater laugh. It's kind of like when was the last time you were in a theater? Like howling, yeah, because that like was not stop to, yeah. to the point where I was getting mad at the crowd because it didn't have subtitles stuff. on. I know, and I was like, "Shut up! I can't hear the fucking I next know. line." I God definitely could have used subtitles. <laughs> yes, I mean, I was really thinking about it. Like, what was the last show? Righteous Gemstones is very funny. Um, oh, I mean, obviously Sunny, but like, yeah. there's not many like shows or sitcoms. That really, like a 30 minute, you know, whatever you want to call it, sitcom, 30 minute comedy, yeah. whatever. Uh, Veep is obviously up there, but like, it's been a little bit f- since a new show came out that was like, this is fucking funny. And it is. This is very good, uh, I think. And I think it's going to get picked up, and I think it's going to get multiple seasons. And it's kind of like, um, I don't want to say like the culmination because there's been other big events. Bert had a movie and, uh, and you know, all these guys started selling out arenas, but like, it's a lot of all the people you've seen on KFC radio over the last five years now, all doing a show together. That is like, this is quality. Yeah. It's funny. It's not, it's not, it's not, it's not on the network. It's not being mishandled. It's well, there's good actors, there's funny comedians, there's great producers, writers, directors, like the way it should be. But it's seemed for whatever reason the last however many years has been everyone says the death of the the mid level like comedy movie. Everything has to be a blockbuster. There's no you know, comedy's dead, all that shit. Whatever those narratives are, this is like uh, I think when you look and if, again, if you know this this universe, this like comedy cinematic universe, it's like there's Francis, there's Stavi, there's Schultz, there's Tommy Pope, there's O'Connor, there's Shane. Like I mean, these are all the guys yeah. that we've all you know co- grown to know and love and have had on this show, and they've gone on to have their own shows and everything. And it's like if those guys have a four or five season run on a sitcom like that. It's a big fucking deal. Yeah, those guys—they're all—they've all become uh, very popular. Yeah, but- we, we are like we are an industry entirely reliant on Shane. <laughs> like, <laughs> like if Shane does well, then probably other people well, will start like getting. I did hear chances and stuff like that. I did overhear that at the at the after party. Um, 
somebody being like, you know, Shane is just changing like all of our lives. Yeah. <laughs> you know? But it's, it, you know, it's a lot like what, what, when Rogan moved to Austin and, and people followed him. Um, and then, you know, Shane has his like basically production company. And when, when you really pop or when you're really and like, I mean, it's kind of Dave with Barstool. And, yeah. you know, when there are there certain guys that really take it to the next level, uh, it's like what, what's very cool about them, though, is like Dave hired us. That's a pretty standard thing. Yeah. Uh, we all grew to become this pirate ship um, thing where it's like we're family, but we all hate each other. And I guess that's what family really is. <laughs> but like what they're doing is like they're friends. Yeah. That's really like when you if you if you were doing this with like your lifelong friend. I mean, I guess if we were to do something now, you and I. It's like we basically have become lifelong friends from this. Right. But if it was like we knew each other all this all this time and we both all three, four, five of us have been trying to become comics and then we did and one of us exploded and then we get to do a show together, it'd be like this is literally what we dreamed of. Yeah. When you're probably like I don't know how, how old those guys were when they first met. I don't know. But you know, if you were in high school together or whatever, just being like, Man, wouldn't it be cool one day if like we all made it? It's like you fucking did, dude. It's some entourage shit in real life. Except they're idiots. Yeah. You know? It's not like hey, I'm the smooth guy from New York. It's like we're all the fucking idiots from Philly. Like Um So I don't know. I, I think that's gonna be the way that like Kim K and them were making fun of the Deus at at the roast being like, I don't even know who these fucking people are. <laughs> if all those guys are in tires and it becomes a show that Netflix picks up and it very to me it very much had a office type of vibe. I mean those those guys can become like very well known names. Yeah. You know? Especially when if they if this show is successful and then people watch it and then they go follow them on social media and see like who they really are. Yeah. It's even better. It's like, oh my God, these guys are actually fucking you know they're not like living that life but they're a lot like that yeah. <laughs> it's a lot of that shit that's very real so um we'll you know we'll see i, so I was what, what's the date it's out paths i think may 22nd or I was, 23rd I was, yeah uh, may, may 20 something may 23rd, may 23rd go, tires is go out. to netflix set a reminder to watch it that yeah. matters for some reason for the algorithm or something like that so oh dude, that's I, interesting I'm, in fact, I'm gonna that. do it right now i've phone. never <laughs> even considered <laughs> Setting a reminder. Yeah. I, I, right. I think I only did it for Beautiful Dogs, and I'm going to do it for this right now. Good to know. But I, I did tell all of them. I said, uh, all the guys I do that I know well enough, you know, Tommy and Chris, um, Francis, I was like, I think you guys are Francis really. was incredible. He really Francis was. was great. He played himself so perfect because uh, right. it, it was like a character that like... Oh, it's you know. Francis. Yeah, 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 he's playing himself, but it's like make two hundred thousand dollars a year. <laughs> <laughs> that was really, really good. There was a moment um, afterwards. They did a Q and A, and Francis was sitting with us, and there was like six chairs up on the stage, and the first three or four were the executive producer, and then Shane, Steve, and and uh, McKeever, and then they were going to bring more people out. Which, by the way, I love. I love McKeever, but I love that he just goes by McKeever. Like yeah, on, yeah, on the, the credits and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like directed by McKeever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> um, and they start. They're like, Frank was in there. Frank was great. And everyone. Oh, well, let me let me tell you this before before this even uh, the Francis story when McCusker showed up. Oh yeah. Just to, not. I'm not talking about to the red carpet or to the premiere. He just walked into the theater. From the back? From the back, like just regular uh, uh, general admission, if you will. Uh, Our crew was sitting in the second to last row because uh, the Stuff Island and those guys were in the the row behind us, the last row. Uh, uh, McCusker just came in and sat on the aisle, the last chair, and somebody saw him walking in, and they were just like, yo, McCusker, you're the man. And so everybody turned and he got like a standing ovation <laughs> yeah. for just coming into the room. And I told him I would have Costanza it. I would have been like, good night. Thank you. It's all downhill from here. I mean, a, a theater of probably like 300 people, 400 people, whatever it was, were just like so gassed up that you were in the room. They were like, yeah, because it like kind of escalated. Like, yeah, you are right. McCusker does rock. And it just like kept going. I was like, holy shit. That was some fucking ovation. But then Francis gets uh, called up to the stage. They were like, "Frank did great. I think he's at, I think he's here tonight, right?" And we all start clapping. And 
when I tell you Francis seized that opportunity, <laughs> my man hit the hole. Like th- if that was me, I would be like, oh, should I? Do you want me to? Should I go up there or yeah. not? Do they want me? I could just I could just wait to the crowd, whatever. He was like <laughs> gone and hit the stage. And uh, Stavi, Stavi was up there by that point. And he just kind of starts doing his big Stavi laugh, that snicker. And he's, like, <laughs> he's, like, he's like, isn't it funny that we all have better lives than Francis? <laughs> he's like a Harvard graduate. He's like so in shape and good looking and stuff. And we're all more successful and rich than he is. And it was just so mean but true. But it's also because it's like, well, yeah, you're talking about Shane and Stavi and these guys who are wildly successful. So it's no no knock to be less successful than the guys who are on the stage there. But the way he said it, I was like, that was so fucking mean, man. <laughs> Stavi also was so funny when he was talking about how they're going to check check what fame does. And he's like, let's see how important it is being on TV because we got every kind of freak looking up here. Yeah, like, he's like, so, he's he, like, he nailed it. He's Great like, observation. He's like, it was him next to McKeever, next to Kirby, <laughs> next to Shane. And he's like, we got every kind of freak here right now. <laughs> yeah. It's like short, fat, poor, gross, rich. Like, it was a, a, a cross section of society. Um, but, uh, yeah, for, uh, Francis also got just shut the fuck down by the end of the Q&A. The, the executive producer was the moderator. And he was not, uh, I don't think he's like a comic or anyone in the industry. I think he's like just like an exec. And he was trying to conduct like a real Q&A. You know, like a, a in behind the scenes of the making of, you know, and it's like you're talking to like five idiots, bro. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and they're all friends and they want to just like make fun of each other. And, um, and then at one point, Francis started to tell a story <laughs> and it was i was still like wanted to know the end of the story he was like i was at the pool with shane and we were doing a uh, who can hold their breath the longest contest and if you've ever been around or seen any of the behind the scenes stuff that we've done this is a theme when if there is a pool and shane gillis is around he is going to swim and hold his breath and he's going to challenge people <laughs> and he's going to declare himself like the king of the world <laughs> and make fun of pussies who can't hold their breath longer than him. <laughs> and so Francis is trying to tell the story about like who could hold their breath longer. And this girl, uh, Kyla, who was part of the, the cast as well, starts bringing up water polo. She's like, well, you're on the water polo team. And then Francis was like, actually, I did. He's, I don't even know what he said. And the executive producer goes, I don't know where this story is going. Thank you, guys. Good night. And just <laughs> shoo, cut him down. And it was just like that. I mean, it was a shutdown like I've never fucking seen before. It's just it's just funny things like that that always happen to Francis. Yeah. Just like, why? But uh he he really did kill it too. I I, I really think tires is going to be a household name type of show. Yeah, I mean it's it's, it's like I've never been in the theater. Well, not never. Austin Powers too. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I haven't been in the theater. Long. It's, saw, it's incredibly incredibly funny. It's I great. saw Austin Powers too. Got to be fourteen times in one summer. <laughs> we have a one movie one picture one screen picture house in my hometown in my high school hometown. And uh, so it was Austin Powers for the whole summer. And that was when I was probably in seventh-ish grade, eighth-ish grade, like middle school where going to the movies was your version of going out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And usually if we went to like the real theaters, you had to get driven by a parent or whatever. This was walkable. So it was like we're all going to walk. We're going to get ice cream. We're going to hold hands. Maybe someone's going to get a hand job or get fingered. Not really, though. <laughs> we're all going to tr- try to do that, but none of us have even kissed a girl yet. And we're going to go to the movie theater and like maybe someone's going to make out with a chick in the back. You know, and the rest of us were just howling at Austin Powers. <laughs> it was—I mean, we went every every Tuesday. It was like three dollar tickets, and then every weekend night, I saw it had to be fifteen times in one summer. <laughs> <laughs> um, but other than that, tires. Yeah, it was yeah. The hardest I've laughed at a theater. Uh, Should I make a quick bed change? Keep an eye. Let me know if that goes down. We'll switch beds. Check, 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 check. Oh, uh, what the hell was that? Why did you just call him bats so many times? Bats yeah, no, I got it. <laughs> hey, he goes, stop, stop, stop. Bat change. <laughs> I love watching Paz become a little film guy. Yeah. Yeah. What yeah. a little pussy no, you we'll are do, now. We'll, do, we'll have to do a pause for a bat change in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> no, sometimes I've learned to hate myself. Well, I mean, like, what else do you say? Hey, right? I'm just going to switch bats real quick. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, Jackie's over here. My bat's running at fifty percent, but, but your bat should be good. It is. It, I mean, I guess you, no one really uses the word battery that much, but it does make sense. It's a long word. You should shorten it. And and I knew what you were talking about, so it's a, it's a, it got the job done. An accurate change, but. Dude, uh, I, everyone loves speed is the pro now. so <laughs> much. What? Speed when we go when we're filming out of order, and like you just say speed, which means everything's got to start rolling. Like audio yeah. speed, and everyone loves it. And like we get done, and everyone will just say speed, speed <laughs> on everything. Yeah, that seems like what <laughs> bro. I really do think there's something happening. Uh, there's just something bubbling. I think along the lines of whether it's the sketch show. Uh, what homeless pimp has done with with his like production style, McKeever, like that I feel like is kind of it's not new because what it is is just like production. Yeah, but I feel like the way it's being done on the internet with the type of people it's being done is maybe I've been trying to think of like what is the next thing, and it, you know podcasting is kind of dead. Obviously, streaming is its its own thing, but I don't think that's for us. You know. We're not really video gamers. We're not young black kids. It's not for us. <laughs> but I really do feel like, you know, guys, like the fact that guys like Pavs and Tommy Lay can do that sort of shit now. Yeah. And that there's a guy like McKeever and Pimp and they're all kind of in different camps and different fields and but everybody can kind of collaborate. I feel like that there's a little well, revolution I think, happening. I, th- I think it's just like the, the, the uh, society's like being cyclical like it yeah. always like i feel like for like so long particularly post pandemic everyone was like doing zoom and like shitty quality stuff and it was yeah. like yeah we love this you can do everything on your phone now yeah and then like we that's all so we saw can, for but, five years yeah. and then you see people who can do shit and you're like oh yes. yeah that's right yeah. <laughs> and, and i think it's even gonna get crazier with like the like young kids now who grew up with like TikTok in their hands where they are like ed- editing and just putting up the, the text and I'm going to do captions and I'm going to do this effect and that effect. By the time those people are like your age and, and I mean, they're going to be fucking wizards, you know, but right now I think it's still in that cool in between where the same way bo- podcasting kind of was where it's like you're ahead of the curve and you're very talented, but you're still kind of gritty because you come from like the, the, the generation before that almost. But I think, um, it's just good to be around all these people. I think, you know, Pav's like talking to McKeever is a good, you know what I mean? Like <laughs> something comes of that. And then, you know, like I said, Pimp is involved somehow. And these things, it's just good that there's, you know, this network of uh, really producers that are all coming out of it that I think can be, you know, really be the next wave of, of like internet entertainment. But, um, that's what we got to, you know, do all these network shit. You know, gotta like mm-hmm. fucking talk to people. We were at, we went to the after party. We, you know, hung in our little crew, but we, we introduced some <laughs> things. We talked to some people. Jackie was the star of the after party. Yeah. <laughs> as as per usual, if Jackie gets the right amount of cocktails in her, <laughs> she starts doing that that noise when she laughs. And uh, in the middle of our after party, Jackie's. Botox activated. <laughs> Her forehead Botox act- activated. And uh, do you have a mic? No. no? Well, you're going to need one. Uh, Jackie Jackie was dressed to the nines. You looked great last night. Tommy Pope said you look like a uh, you were in a bad boy music video, which is probably a yeah. little bit before your time, but it was a good call. Yeah. You were in like all black leather. <laughs> um, looked great. <laughs> you were kind of horish. <laughs> Once Jackie gets that perfect level of drunk or whatever, I don't know. Can I also know my Botox? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, look. <laughs> there? We. There. <laughs> <laughs> Not a <laughs> Is this your first time ever getting Botox? Yeah. It is? Oh, okay. This makes more sense. You were like so excited about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is about crazy. What she it just did there. It's just crazy, like my, my whole life being able to move the forehead and then just all no. come in, make conversation. Be, I can't move it. Yeah. <laughs> well, that it was exactly what you, the viewer, just saw. Except imagine Jackie doing a honk every time she lands. <laughs> That's what she does. When she's drunk, but she she's just took a. She's gonna fight you. I told her I would give her eight hundred dollars to do more Botox if she could move any part of her forehead right now. That she could do. <laughs> just, uh, <laughs> just would. Nah. <laughs> it is a very weird thing. So I, I've got yeah. this one. Yeah, you know. A few years ago, <laughs> and it was like 
It is very, like, particularly the first two days are yeah. very cool. You're yeah. Like, this is good. Not, like, cool. I don't know if cool is the right word, but it's like, it's very crazy. It's like very you said, your whole life you could move something and then you just, and you yeah, just yeah. Like, I'm just paralyzed smooth. now. Smooth. You're like, yeah. smooth. smooth. Yeah. I don't know what paraplegics body. are always complaining about. <laughs> 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 this is pretty crazy. I used to be able to move this shit. Now I can. <laughs> so, yeah, we, we, we do the after party and, uh, it was great all around. Tires was very well done. Very good premiere. We, we did have a brief moment where, uh, as you know, if you've been listening, this has been the least well-planned, worst logistical trip of all time. And when we showed up, there was like general admission and then there was like a VIP gate. And as we walked through it, I just said, I got a bad feeling about <laughs> this one. And our names, of course, are not on the list. And I was like, I'm going to have to say, they're like, well, like, who, well, how do you, why are you here? Like, who, you know, who told you to come? And I was like, Shane. And I, I thought they were going to be like, oh, yeah, really? Like, <laughs> shut the fuck up. But there was that awkward moment of like the four of us standing there, three of us standing there being like, oh, no. I was like, I'm ready to go. I'm ready to just turn around and leave. <laughs> it was the, the second, though. I mean, obviously, like, like how did you know about it? Like, well, Shane just texted us. Yeah. Like, oh, Shane texted you? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But I was worried they were, like, going to not believe it or whatever. We're still just very, like, you know, because we don't ever make – we're not, like – we don't have a team. We don't have a publicist. We don't have anybody. Again, Jackie's not doing these things for us. We don't have anybody like to make sure it's all smooth. So we always roll into these things. Like, I don't know. Maybe we're going to get it. Maybe we're not. I'm not sure. We just got it crazy. You did. <laughs> Jackie gave me this chewed up, busted up Listex last night because I was, my lips were chapped and I forgot mine. And she just out of nowhere came up with her own deal she said now we're even it's <laughs> like what she's like now we're even for everything all my all my mistakes everything messed up she goes you can keep that one i was like the way she said it you could hold that you can hold you could keep that but I, you can't you know any all my all my mistakes are all erased like, okay jackie <laughs> bitch um i'm not the type john to 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 uh buy a bunch of stuff for myself things that i could use or wear yourself. or accessorize you got you do yeah. have to treat yourself but i'm just not the type to be like go shop for this thing or that thing but bespoke post is a uh company that will just take care of all of it for you they will send you a monthly box filled with things that you can wear or accessorize or use or decorate uh, anything that can you, you know can, it's classy too because it's called bespoke bespoke I mean it is tailored for uh, you know guys who want to uh, get new stuff basically every month sent to them this this month they sent a, uh, a nice watch that you know I wasn't thinking about but all of a sudden bam here you go got yourself a new watch now I'll wear that uh, they have all sorts of different um, uh, things that you can use and wear like I said things around the house uh Accessories, honestly, things that probably when a woman enters your apartment, yes, goes. That's what I was gonna say. Nice, those things. I don't know exactly how to characterize them. It's just makes like, your house a home, makes you look it, like a man. Elevates. Like you're, you're it makes you look you. elevation, right? Yeah. Exactly. You, this is a home. You're an adult, right? Here you have, and it's a thing that, like, you know, maybe we all have it, but this is a, a nicer version of it, or this is real leather, or this is stainless steel. Whether it's in the kitchen or the bedroom or your clothing, it's like, oh, this is quality stuff, and it's from. Uh, uh, bespoke is where you go to Box of Awesome. Uh, every month they will send you uh, everything with carefully chosen gear to make you uh, elevate your lifestyle. Get your free monthly get, get your free mystery gift with your first monthly shipment when you go to sign up at boxofawesome.com and enter the code KFC Radio at checkout. That's boxofawesome.com, KFC Radio at checkout, and you'll get your first monthly shipment uh, for free uh, at box of, back, boxofawesome.com. And then uh, we, all, we, we we called it early for the night because we had the big 5K in the morning. The Porosos, two bears, one cave, 5K, which yet again, we did not understand what we were walking into. <laughs> I don't know. I've never done any sort of 5K, but I'm picturing like a Thanksgiving turkey trot. I thought it was going to be the Michael Scott fun run. Yeah. I yeah. I thought we were going to like go somewhere into a – uh, neighborhood in California and like we're going to start at the elementary school and we're going to end at like the church <laughs> you know like just run through this little like community with like 20 people it filled up the fucking Rose Bowl <laughs> we show up and like three quarters of the parking lot is full for the Rose Bowl <laughs> we, they had everything on the, on the field of the Rose Bowl this whole activation they had a stage they had uh, different food trucks and uh, and and drink uh, tents and all these things. I was like, 
of course this is. Of course. Like, why do we... I guess we just need to get it through our thick skulls that, like, we're at a point where all of these things are going to be massive events. Yeah. The, you know? Even the fact that... I, like, I just... I don't know. I don't know, man. Like, I thought... I knew it was at the Rose Bowl. I didn't know what... I don't know why I didn't put Me together... Me too. I, I, it's that. why, of course, if they rented out a fucking stadium, <laughs> of course it's going to be big in some way or another. But the despite the size, again, pulling up, it was it was like this parking lot of the Rose Bowl was full. And I saw that, and I was like, oh, this is a big deal. No sunblock. None of us had any sunblock <laughs> on. We were all going to get absolutely fucking roasted. Some very lovely woman gave me a whole tube of of uh, sunblock and uh, and she, she said i have this i was with ryan sickler ryan sickler by the way when he he's in you know he's kind of in the the two bears cinematic universe so he's very well known in that crew but i was with him for most of the the 5k i mean every single person stopped and took a picture with ryan sickler it was unbelievable he is a fucking rock star out on the west coast um but she was she, he asked to just like put a little on his forehead and I was like, I need it too. And she goes, Go ahead. And I go, I'm just gonna use a little. And she goes, No, 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 go ahead, use it. And I was like, I'm gonna need to use the whole fucking thing. And I I think she was Spanish of some sort, and she was like, You need it. You <laughs> need it more than me. So I just stole this woman's tube of fucking of uh, sunblock. We have taken more pictures with more Mexican fans than so I've ever taken in my Mexican entire fans. life. So. I mean, we are uh, in in LA, so I guess it makes more sense, but the Mexicanos are yeah. very big fans of KFC Radio. Who knows? But I got to witness pre race. I got to witness one of my favorite things that I've ever seen in my life, and that was John just completely geek out, completely fangirl. I mean, for none other than Travis Parker. That was. I've never seen John like this in my life. I didn't know I had that in me. I didn't know. I mean, we we now by now have seen a lot of people, met a lot of people. And you were. I'm pretty sure I'm gay for Travis Barker. <laughs> like I'm not even attracted to him. He's just the fucking man. So dude, dude, like, it was, bro. He John. John was like, you must have been thinking about it for a while because the way you first said it, you were like, you go like, I think I have to ask him for a picture. <laughs> so I was like, all right, in, I know internally. I mean, Blink One Eight Two is that's your jam. That's it, your shit. Blink One Eight Two, Fall Out Boy. Like that's my. Life, like that's like yeah. not my life, but like, dude, I, I remember, I can remember vividly being like the moody ten year old or twelve year old or whatever age I was. Fuck you, the, mom! Like, like sitting on like a, a airport shuttle with my discman and my ESP uh, discman. The like with the headphones on, just listen to "Take Off Your Pants and Jacket." Yeah. Like, you guys don't fucking know. Like, <laughs> like, 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 you don't have a single problem, kid. And I'm like, <laughs> like your like, life is like, literally like, perfect. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, your parents love you. Your life is great. Like, you don't get it. <laughs> My angst. <laughs> but but John, like I, I I said to him, and I I I love Travis Parker, but I don't. I would walk right up to him and be like, hey, can I get a picture? Because, you know, when you when when you don't really care about some, an athlete or something like yeah, that, yeah. someone else does, it's like, I don't fucking care if I embarrass myself or bother that person or whatever. So, John's like, no, 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 I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. And he approached where they were, like, they were talking like two or three people. And he approached and then he turned and he went, I'm not going to do it. <laughs> he goes, no, I can't do it yet. And he started doing this thing with his hand and he, like, was like, being all coy and like <laughs> like walking away in like a circle just like no I can't do it yet. I can't do it yet and the funny thing was like right before this we were talking to someone on Bert's team I think and we had taken a hundred pictures 100. and they were like it's so funny they're like, they're like I don't want to be rude or whatever they said you know the, the little precursor before you get a backhanded compliment <laughs> yeah, yeah. and it was like they were like I don't, I don't want to be rude but like it's so funny that Everyone's coming up and taking pictures with you and Travis Barker standing there. I'm like, I fucking know. Yeah. And then I and then you're like, I think you said you're like, you're, we've taken a hundred pictures. Like, just go ask him for one. Yeah. I was, I was like, like, no, nobody. I'm like, me. He's Travis Barker. I'm not gonna go fucking interrupt Travis Barker. But I mean, when people come up to us and they go like, I'm sorry to interrupt. Could we take a picture? We always are like, yeah, sure, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> so, but you're right. I mean, Travis Barker is a cut above. So I'm sure he's been doing that forever. Yeah. And eventually, he doesn't want to do it. But if you come out to a very public 5K, you know what you're getting into. Yeah. Uh, so John eventually gets his his bucket list picture, and then Travis Barker proceeds to go out there and smoke these motherfuckers. He's the fastest man alive. He's the fastest yeah, man alive. It's insane. He smoked these fools. Like I was walking with Sickler, 
and I saw him coming back from like to the finish line already with nobody from your group in sight. Dude, I was a quarter mile into the race. I, I, I there were there weren't mile markers. There weren't. It wasn't the time. I have no idea what I finished in. But the at one point. Travis was like sprinting past me the other way. He was way. running full speed. My my goal, like, I, not, it wasn't really my goal, but I was like, I'll just, I'll try and keep up with Travis Parker. And that was before we started running or anything like that. When I saw him, <laughs> good I, luck, I, buddy. I, I was like, I just want to keep up with him and and just keep being like, dude, you're the man. Dude, hey, <laughs> hey, hey, dude, you're fucking killing this. You're the best. <laughs> and he was full sprint the whole time. Paz and Jackie said he didn't stop running when he crossed the finish line. He just kept going. He, he just, just like, like Forrest Gump to just kept, like I'm out of here. we know, See you sitting losers. here right now, Travis Barker is still running. <laughs> <laughs> Ran all the way like, back to Courtney. <laughs> See you later. He, he was so alone when he came back. Like, I'm talking he didn't have his team. There was no buddy, no, no pal with him, no cameraman with him because he dusted all these motherfuckers. So me, Sickler, and this, uh, I think his name was Troy. He's like the photography, the, fo- the photographer for like all the comedians. We were able to be like, yo, tra-, like from a distance as he was coming up, like, Travis, like you're killing it, man. He was like, thank you, bro. We like had a quick little conversation because nobody was even mm-hmm. around. It was like we could have a little intimate moment with him because there was nobody blocking him, talking to him. He was that far ahead and that solo. It was, I was like, did he cheat? Yeah. <laughs> or is he just gassing? And he was in a fucking black hoodie, all blacked out. But like black sweatshirt, hood up. I was like, this is crazy. It was it was so funny running the race because obviously the race it's not Michael Scott style. It was like a loop, so you you see people coming back right. as you're running out still, and just seeing like the smattering of people covered in tattoos of Travis's team still <laughs> trying behind. to keep up. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you're like, dude, you're not even close, bro. He <laughs> he is way past you. And while you know Travis might have stolen the the the, I mean Travis won the race. I think he ran a five k in, in like five minutes. But uh, Jelly Roll was the star of the show. Yeah. Jelly Roll and Bert. I really didn't see Jelly Roll. I I, Bert, I Bert. ran by them. I smacked your ass when you were walking with them, but I I, I just saw them quick. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, you did? I smacked somebody's ass. I was going to say, <laughs> you didn't smack my ass, bro. I'm pretty sure I smacked your ass. I don't think you did. I remember when you came, walked by us, came by us. Well, okay, let's change this thing. I sexually <laughs> assaulted somebody on the race today. <laughs> I mean, I, my brain, I've been saying it forever. I got this early onset dementia, so maybe I'm wrong. I don't think you smacked my ass. What? I think you I smacked, smacked someone's ass who was standing next to you. <laughs> or in the general or someone vicinity. Like all, was it, yeah. it was like a different person altogether? Or you think Dude. it was someone, like you knew where I was. You saw me. I saw you. Okay. I... I because it, it be. you were I walking with be. Bert, and Bert started yelling at me. I was not walking with Bert, but you were like you weren't far. You, you were in that. Crew. Oh, okay. You I was like, gonna say you were in that. In that so in yeah, that what, what happened was we were walking, and when Jelly Roll and Bert came back, we just looped into yeah, their crowd. Yeah, right. Okay. So I okay. saw you like you were at the back of that, and I, I could see all the cameras. And stuff okay. like that. I was gonna say if you smacked someone on the ass near Bert, like it was not me. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be very funny. It was just a different person. Yeah, no, I just slapped someone's ass. <laughs> but he, so I, I didn't realize the backstory of this when when Tom and Bert first kicked this idea around. And they kind of said it half joking, half serious, but Jelly Roll like immediately posted it to his social media and said, I oh, mean, I'm going to take this very seriously. Obviously, Jelly Roll is a, a bigger guy, and I think he's lost like 70 pounds in preparation for this. And he was marching. Yeah. He had on sweatpants and a sweatshirt. I think he was like sweating, sweating it out while he did it and was like stomping his way. And he was at the front of the crowd. And the people that saw him. I mean, it was, again, it was like a Forrest Gump thing. He was like a hero, bro. Yeah. Got to the finish line. People were going bananas for him. It was uh, it was the Jelly Roll show for sure. I didn't see him much afterwards at the after party, though, so I wonder if he was like, fucking done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See no, you I, fucking I, later. I, I got to go lay down. Yeah. I didn't see him at all. Like, this was it for me. <laughs> our, our guy Foley did very well. He marched with along with, Foley, uh, with along with Jelly Roll. He finished with him, no problems. Um, but once again, Fettelberg, most athletic guy in the world. The whole time he's sandbagging everybody again. I knew he was doing it. He kept being like, I haven't run since high school. I don't think I'm not going to go back. Everyone kept asking me. He kept going. I kept, I kept saying, I think you're going to be fine, man. You work out every fucking day. And he goes, but I don't do cardio. He said, you jump rope all the fucking time. So maybe you're not going to run well, but you're going to be okay. And he did it. I, I'm pretty sure. 
I want to say you ran. I think you. I think you left at eleven fifty five, ten fifty five, and I think you finished at eleven twenty. I think you that's, did. I think you did between twenty and twenty five minutes, which I think is fucking stellar for probably, someone who has not run like in decades. I, I haven't run three miles in, in in a long time. It is very funny. A, a seven minute, seven to eight minute pace, just off the rip. After no years of, of running, I think is for me wildly impressive. <laughs> well, it's 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 sure, but it is very funny that like this defined my day, like running three miles. I know, and some people just do it like, people, yeah. like everybody just runs three miles. Like not everybody, but millions of people just like yeah, I do that, and then I go to work. Yeah, <laughs> it's yeah. just like it's my whole. Like, what did you do today? I ran three miles. And that's yeah. it. <laughs> that, that, that's your accomplishment for the day. Yeah. I really do yeah. want to know. Like people like people have run ten miles before work. People run all the time, and I mean, everyone's like, "Wow, John was pretty good out there <laughs> running three miles." <laughs> it is. It honestly, I've tried to. I I I was not sandbagging. I, I truly mean that. I have tried to run on treadmills and stuff like that. And I I can't. I do not run more than a quarter mile. Every time I'm just huh. like I'm like I'm done. This is fucking dumb. But I think when it's a race, it's just the, or not even a race, but like an up. event. You're like yeah, you run other people. It's outdoors. It's like like but even but like I can't. Like I can I can just get off the treadmill. I can't get off the race. Like right, I was like right. I just well, you're the, like, a very uh, you're a very like rise to the occasion guy. Chicken salad, chicken Caesar salad, baby. Yeah, <laughs> but but also I mean more like. You play up to your competition in a way, you know. Like, I I think uh, you always, yeah you always rise to the occasion in the sense of like I don't ever do this or I don't think I'm good at this, but like I have no choice, so we're gonna do it, and then you usually smash it. Yeah, well, it's, well, it's just like the sooner you do it, the sooner you're done. <laughs> but 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 I think usually yes, but then you go out there and you're good at it. <laughs> I don't know again. I don't know about that. I I I it was fun. It was a good time. I I think. You're so you're the worst at taking compliments. <laughs> it's fucking insane how bad you are. Tom. Just be like, okay, yes. we're like, cool, man. Thank you, man. Whatever. <laughs> hey, man, you're, like you're really you're really good actor. <laughs> anyway, anyway, moving on, moving on. Hey, dude, you're actually really in shape. <laughs> like, just fucking say okay, you dumb asshole. <laughs> Thank you, Kevin. <laughs> uh, um, we, but we, the we, but rising to the occasion, if uh, uh, we're not always great at that. I was going to say, I, I think you know where you're going, but there was one. We did not rise to one occasion today. Yeah. Bert was such a motherfucker. He's, he's such a nice, great motherfucker. Such a, he's always giving us opportunities. <laughs> fucking presenting us with awesome options to do incredible things that most people would kill for. But oh, this, he's this such one, a gracious son of a bitch. God, this God, one, God. this one though, really fucked us. <laughs> this one, he, he, they took like a long break. You're talking about going on stage, right? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. oh, yeah. The most mortifying part of the day? Yeah. That's yeah. what I'm talking about. Uh, second most, the picture the, the picture thing. Was the, the, the picture thing didn't play out that bad. If you watched us do it, it looked terrible. But I actually thought that thing's kind of cool. Have you seen the, us or the foursome? Foursome. I, I have a, yeah, I, 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 I haven't seen the foursome. I've seen the twosome. I thought the foursome was fine. Yeah. 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 I don't care. Yeah, I, 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 he, he, Pavs showed me the video of of us doing it, and it's awful. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I was like, don't post that. Yeah. I was like, we got to draw a line somewhere where we stop making ourselves look like colossal assholes all the time. But now, okay. <laughs> give me like you know, give me like an hour. I was fine. Well, with it. we just like this. What we do? It's just us being then, like awkward and nervous and like. Yeah. Standing there, all right, day in life. <laughs> yeah. Well, you well, know, uh, just so whatever you're gonna put it in, whatever you feel watching this, understand that's what we feel at all times. Yeah, <laughs> like, yes. like, Bro, like I, when I, you're like, oh, that's cringing. That's what I feel like all the oh, fucking time. If I open my that's mouth, why I sit in the corner and listen to Blink Way too. <laughs> I just rewatch, and it's not that bad, and it's also what a normal person should do. Besides the people that are like. Oh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I was like I was like I want to capture how awkward we are. This. So I was like I don't know. <laughs> uh there was there was a guy doing a dance with his girl. 
that Jackie was disgusted. Yeah. <laughs> you were, why are you as a man doing you, that? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> that made me that that set the shiver down my spine where I was like, I'm never gonna do anything like that ever again. Because if there's any if there's one single girl out there having that reaction, <laughs> it ain't worth it. He Jay. did he did a, a twirl. I think it was with his girlfriend, probably, right? Hmm. It was either girlfriend or like their gay best friend, but they did like a twirl and then like a back to back like Charlie's Angels thing, and I was like, that was like super gay. <laughs> and and we were gonna do it like something similar like that. They were trying to be real and like let's have a cool three sixty picture. Did we, did we describe what this was, by the way? I don't think we described it. Mm. No. So we're, I'm talking about one of those like E red carpet 360 glam bot. They had a, 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 a ring light with a phone and they spun it around. And the, these two did like a choreographed dance. And I was like, oh, we got to go up there and do something gay like that, you know? And um, I, and then the time came, though, and I was like, wait, what are we going to do? Are we, are we actually going to do a dance? And Jackie goes like or you said like no we're not gonna do that because some guy just did it and Jackie reacted like (laughs) yo who is like what is your dream type man because you have you say like as a man why are you doing that a lot I I, I feel like you're gonna end up marrying like a mechanic like a lumberjack yeah (laughs) Yeah. 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 either that or it's like it'd be like some twink like the like everything she's always made fun of she ends up falling in love with one of those my friends all make fun of me like they, they, they like act like my type is like this like fat Big, burly, like, <laughs> yeah. pu- but like it's. Well, it's, it's gotta be something. Fly, fly, fly. <laughs> yeah. It's gotta be something with big enough hands and feet to like <laughs> fucking make Whatever, her like feel a like a dainty little thing. Burly <laughs> man like walks by the be like Jackie. <laughs> 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 <You're fair. laughs> but that's like not my type. Like I, I, I what I is love, your type? Like my past type has been like honestly like blonde guys that are like five nine five blonde. like ten. <laughs> You're, you're one of the guys, one of the girls sticking up for the short kings. <laughs> no, no, not even just like. Well, yes, definitely. I mean, I like just in the past. That's just what I go for. I don't know. You don't I don't have like a type. Like six feet. I'm a personality girl. <laughs> Dude. I mean, you loved the Boston Strangler. You were a smitten kitten with him. No, I wasn't. Smitten you were a smitten kitten. No, he's the Boston Strangler. I thought he's cute. The guy, the guy who choked out the dudes. Who? The guy who, the voicemail guy who choked out the. Oh man. yes, yes, yes. She yes, was yeah, like, yeah. he's uh, cute. He's no, good. I was. I just think he's cute. I was gonna say while we're giving Jackie compliments, but we're not. Uh, <laughs> if we're all. putting in that video, we're putting in that picture of Jackie's hand, it's blurred. Oh my god, <gasps> it's <Yeah>. blurred. <laughs> Guess what, if bitches? I'm thought- not putting it in. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's, that's producer code. You can't violate it. You gotta put it in. Her hand looks. Enormous. It's the size of your torso. Again, it's it's, uh, it's blurred. It's like a it's you know like an action shot, uh, <laughs> but it looks it does it's not wiggly or anything. It just makes your fingers look huge. It's not, it's not a flattering angle of my hand. <laughs> <laughs> it makes that that the Cole Kidman picture look small. <laughs> it's so weird. You have the it's because like look, I'm staring at your hands right now. They're like normal size hands. Really? But just like every once in a while, it's just like what the fuck is I, that thing? I mean, I don't know. They, I look at them and like they're as big as my hands. <laughs> they're, they're, they're big. That's my thought. I, yeah. I have tiny hands, so I'm not. I'm not one to speak. I am. You have like paws. I, I, I project my insecurities paws. about my hands on Jackie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I just look, look at that like, big hand, bitch. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Normal girls have small hands. I'm like, hmm. <laughs> I go by she/her. <laughs> um, uh, but so we um, so we do that. We did the awkward uh, 360 thing. And I thought that was bad enough. And then Bert was getting on stage, and uh, Tony Hinchcliffe showed up. And Tony right now is riding high. <laughs> Tony has been riding a wave since the 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 Bert, since the Tom Brady roast because he fucking killed it. Not only in uh, in his jokes, but his delivery, the way he walked down the row slowly and just fucking pow, pow, <laughs> pow, pow. every single one of them, perfect pacing, perfect timing, the whole nine. So he. You know, if you've been, again, if you're in this world, you know about Kill Tony live show every Monday and or every week in, uh, in Austin where he, you perform and then people roast. So he's in like the roast world. So he's already on stage. And Bert's like, come on, let's get up on stage. And he starts walking up and then he's like, uh, into the mic. He's like, we got KFC Radio here. We got Fidelberger. We got Kevin. And I'm like, ah, fuck. And I start walking up, and he's like, let's get up there and roast each other. And I was like, 
what? <laughs> How, like, I'm going to have to get up there with two fucking major mega professional comedians and do a roast? No fucking thank you. So I, I do a quick little 360 and I put my mic down. And I was like, let's just see how this plays out because I don't want to, you know, whatever. And then I don't know how what happened. But somebody picked up the mic and gave it to John. Yeah. And there was only <laughs> one mic. And I was like. <laughs> <laughs> and we get up on stage and it was like, if we're, I mean, if we have to get in a roast battle right now, we're going to just get fucking smoked. You you would have had to put a gun to my head to make me talk. And then, it, <laughs> and, and then the only words what I said would pull the trigger. <laughs> like, there was no chance I was going to try and roast Tony fucking Hinchcliffe. Like, on no planet no, was and, that And also, have. it was like a, you know, everyone knows Bert, and they're like, they're, these are the people who came out. By the way, it was just so funny. It was a, just a Tuesday morning, and there's just like thousands of people with no jobs. <laughs> just like the biggest unemployment conference I've ever seen in my life. I was like, I know why we're here, but every now and then I had to remind myself. I was like, why the fuck are you people here? Uh, it's a Tuesday, Tuesday at 11 a.m. Yeah. Yeah. I was sipping on an IPA and yelling at people. Where the fuck are you? <laughs> <here?" laughs> <laughs> but we... Uh, so we found we found the way to kind of avoid being roasted by Tony Hinchcliffe and it's be so unimportant that he has no idea who you are. Well, I was going to say Bert said, you know, the crowd was late worship Bert and Tony is is <laughs> What are you Bro, are you designed to rearrange the room right now? Right you, now this is going to happen. What are you doing? <laughs> knew that this is gonna be a whole thing I yeah what? well of course it is it's like we are like at the end of the episode why would you even bother moving something now because we have low bat oh we got low bat <laughs> so you gotta charge it okay we got low bat right, when she when she starts laughing and does that wheezing thing <laughs> really, it's so good i i, I do i do you love got up and told me we were gonna notice like you you're rearranging like maybe they won't notice <laughs> <laughs> so I get a for the bat, I got the bat charger. It, it, I love, I do love when she's gonna try to do something like, like quiet as a mouse, and it's like <laughs> fee fi fo bum. <laughs> Charge your bat. Um, but these guys are worshiping Bert. They all are. They all just came off a top. <laughs> Wait, wait, Jack, That's supposed to reach over there? It's not even close. Jackie, let's go wide for the uh, final and then bring that one over to Matt. Oh, wait, this work. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Okay, sorry, continue. <laughs> yeah, sure, 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 continue. This is the fifth time I'm trying to even just say this non-important <laughs> point. But my point was, you know, Bert was like, Does everybody know KFC Radio out there? And like, enough people were like, yeah. But it was not like, we're here for KFC Radio. <laughs> so then, yeah, to just stand there. I, I thought, uh, to be honest, I thought it was a good pop. Yeah, okay, good. I was I was, I was hoping that too. Cause I, yeah, okay. So I, I mean, I just kind of stood there and I was like, go ahead, Tony. Like, I don't know. Like, roast, do what you do. He called us a gay couple and then said something about, like, who the fuck are these guys or whatever yeah, he it was, said right? He, it, was, it was, they were three clean shots. It was one, I didn't realize we were running Make a Wish. Clean, yeah. Clean shot. Yep. Uh, two, uh, you guys got vitamin D for the first time. Clean shot. Oh, Very looked, pale. So pale. Uh, and three, some about, I, I honestly don't remember. I think it was just like, gay you couple. Gay. He yeah, said, yeah. he said, like, uh, I didn't know we we're allowing gay couples in this. Now. Yeah, yeah. It's like, cool. Three Done. clean shots. And, and I was like, and then, all accurate. And like, then, uh, like, I told my mom about it. She's like, yeah, it all sounds right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then Segura came on stage and it was like, okay, give the mic to him. And we were like, yeah. I and we, and we scurried I saw off Tom on stage. stage. Like, and I was oh. like, that could not have gone better given the yeah, circumstances. Yeah. Like, like there was no chance we were going to steal the show. So <laughs> the best opportunity was get your ass roasted like 75% and get the fuck out of there. <laughs> like, all fucking good, man. And then they went on, they moved on to the football contest, which... Uh, football throwing. Football throwing contest, which we basically started with Ari. Ari was there and we were standing on the, the midfield of the Rose Bowl. And it, it surprisingly... Did feel I, small. I don't know what it is about the architecture of it because you know I've been on football fields. When we, I'm in like, Giant Stadium, I feel like I'm in a fucking. Well, even like a high school football field, I've never been on and been like, why can't you throw it to the other end? And, yeah. But for some reason, at the Rose Bowl, it the way felt, that looks, maybe the way it was with the stage in the middle, it kind of cut it in half, kind of deal. So it became a football throwing contest. Everyone's trying to air it out, and I'm like, bro, there is no fucking shot. I'm going to try to unload for you know, even at my 
if I if I threw my one last fucking Chet Stedman throw, it's still not going far enough to like beat anybody. So I'm like, I am not doing this. And and this is where I just get Stan Feilberg. This is fucking <laughs> asshole. They're all throwing. They're all throwing the ball. Hinchcliffe threw it first, and then Burt goes. So they're all throwing them, and and like Tony goes first, and then Burt goes and at this point like a handful of guys have gone and they're all throwing like pretty close and john wants no part of this throwing contest he's like actively walking away uh to to not be a part of it and then i go i think you could beat these guys and he's like oh no definitely i could i could definitely throw it further than them it's like, well then what are you doing not getting up there and doing it I, I and then you did it and you threw it further than anybody except for the gigantic uh security guard which that what was the count. word you were going to say in between? Black. <laughs> <laughs> what was the word you edited out in the middle of your thought process? <laughs> this gigantic black dude. Just, I don't know whose security guard he was, Burt's or whoever, but they called him up and he was just like fucking shredded. He pulls up his shirt to show Burt's, you know, like, look at your belly, look at mine. And then he just threw a fucking laser. <laughs> but, uh... I, I, you know, I, I was, uh, well, I watched is. a couple other guys that I will not say their name to spare them who were like, you know, they, they said my name and I don't want to be the pussy who doesn't do it. So I'm going to do it. And then they threw a duck yeah. and it's like, I promise you, bro, it was a better move to be back here with me going, I'm not doing it <laughs> because it's better to just be like, yeah, I didn't throw it all, but I didn't look like that yeah. <laughs> because it's just, uh, some of the reactions I heard from the people around going well that was embarrassing and i was like well that didn't happen to me <laughs> but you fucking smoked it yeah well here's the thing uh, it's a very nice thing about the world we live in in comedy is people go into comedy for a reason <laughs> Because uh-huh. they were not good at sports. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. So being a mediocre athlete is the but, smart kid on the short bus. But when all these guys who, whether they whether they realize what you just said or not, most of them don't, <laughs> are like, let's have a fucking throwing contest. And you're like, I can just beat all these guys. <laughs> fucking go beat them. Just happy Gilmore, that shit. I'll just beat them now. Uh, I'll just beat them now. If I could, if I could throw, I would have been like, "Yeah, let's fucking go, Sakura. Let's go, Bert." And John was just like, "Okay." So that's been his whole mo. It's been it's been the the like the John. It's been the the Feidelberg tour. The this year has just been the the combine, the fucking well, started with the acting, and then the combine, this throwing. There was something in between that. that oh, the, even just the running. He just ran a fucking twenty five minute twenty minute five k. Just. It's the year of Heidelberg. <laughs> All doing, don't get me wrong, totally inconsequential things that don't really matter. I mean, the acting does. The acting really matters. But the rest of it has zero uh, substance. It does not uh, improve your life in any way. The, the, but, again, but, like, again, just to, clarify, to, to really crystallize this for the listeners, uh, I threw a football and you ran, ran three, three miles. miles like, this and, guy is something yeah, special you, you, over you here. You, lift, you lifted weights <laughs> once. You threw a ball and you ran a, 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 like a warm up jog for a lot of America. And uh, I'm like, yo, you're the fucking, you're the machine, bro. <laughs> it doesn't take much, man. It does not take much anymore. Um, so yeah, all it was, all, it was. I mean, but like, it was, it was so much fun. It was so. I do, I, I as I always say, you know, I'm a homebody and a no guy, and John is a yes guy, and every time we do it, I'm happy to do it. I'm happy that we did it. But uh, for whatever reason, this one, maybe it's because of Premiere and what I what I was saying earlier is like I really am starting to feel that something important is happening. I do, that's where I, I do wish that, uh, I think a lot of the fans of Barstool who are fans of comedy do recognize what we have done at KFC Radio and our our involvement on kind of the outskirts of that comedy world. Um, those people do understand and appreciate it. But I don't think the company does or the higher-ups, the salespeople, the other bloggers um, really understand. Like I, This to me felt – I was like, wow, we are really just like bouncing from this to this to this yeah. and friends with all these people and invited to all this shit – and and I do think that there is a lot more uh, to come on that front. But we did have some nice conversation. It is it's so you know, like it's weird to just be like and though like those guys like McKeever came up to me and 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 these guys are like you know happy to see us and I'm like this is fucking 
amazing, mm-hmm. you know? I don't know. For whatever reason it was, this trip really made me feel like, uh, you know, it's a good thing you said yes and came because you, you would have been an asshole to turn down rubbing elbows and talking to some of these people and exper- experiencing some of these things. Well, the, the we had we've had a few encouraging and nice conversations on this trip but like one of the craziest ones was right before the race when that fucking guy came up to us was like we were like he's like hey like love big fan whatever he said and then you're like getting nice to meet you and he's like yeah i'm like the casting director of netflix oh yeah (laughs) yeah yeah Yeah. he was like uh he he said he he had a list of words he was like i'm like the the producer director uh casting for uh (laughs) Scripted, unscripted movies, television, and uh, like documentaries. It was like he said like everything. I was like, uh, oh, so you're the most important guy ever? Yeah. I was like, all right, so never mind. We're not keeping up with Travis Parker. We're keeping up with this guy. And then he was faster than me too. Yeah. <laughs> but that, yeah, once you just like come around these things, it's like maybe that guy would have been like, oh shit, you know what? I'm looking for like a sketch comedy show. Like here you go, guys. So uh, you know you got to put yourself in those positions. I'm happy to do. You know, my whole my whole bar stool thing, you know, in the very beginning was like getting out of corporate life. And one thing about corporate life is that networking shit. It's a, which, by the way, hats off to everybody in like the regular the, the real, world, the real uh, the the regular network who does that. This these four days, three days, whatever we've been here are the most tired I've ever been. Exactly. It's pretty like, exhausting because you just have to be on all the fucking but time. It's infinitely easier doing it with like these guys than when you're doing it to like close a sale for yeah. like a fucking you it, know. it's like like no bullshit it is hands down the most tired i've ever been you gotta and listen to people listening oh. and like uh, repeat you know know <laughs> like you know what they said and you know know remember their name and yeah we like our our go-to is always like well, we're not coal miners like i'm not a fucking I, 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 I don't know. Salesman of something. Like, <laughs> what do people sell? I'm Nailed not, it. I'm not a candle salesman. <laughs> <laughs> what are you fucking saying right now? I don't know, man. John Feidelberg, not a candle salesman. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know why candle sales is the first thing that popped into it. <laughs> Boy, candle salesman must be out there grinding. He pointed <laughs> out to the hills of L.A., I know, I looked at, the Hollywood I Hills, and said, I think candle was, maker. I think I saw the Furiosa sign, so I saw flames. And I, and I was like... But, but even <laughs> the whole way you did that, uh, the people say I'm not a coal miner. I'm not a, I'm not a fucking sales of whatever <laughs> candles. <laughs> also, you guys tried to explain networking. You were like, you have to talk to people. <laughs> you got a list. Awful, bro. We said, Awful. And, and, and that's it. That's the list. But yeah. it's a tiring thing to do. <laughs> well, but what I was gonna say is doing it with like. When when it's uh, a meeting a new comedian, a meeting a new uh, actor, even meeting like when it is business, but it's like the head of casting at Netflix. It's like it's a lot better than me. Like meet our local regional manager who makes all the decisions about how many tires we're going to sell. <laughs> like, uh, bad, fucking kill me. So it's like there are, these are conversations that people would like kill to have, and even sometimes we're like, all right, we got to get out of here. I'm tired. <laughs> I don't want to talk to you people anymore. <laughs> So it's, 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 it's ten thirty. Does anyone have any weed? I think I'm going to go home and watch a movie. <laughs> yeah, I mean it's it's uh it's Kanye. It's uh you know KFC Radio Battery Low. Yeah. Bat, low. Bat low. low. <laughs> Bat low. Uh, all right. Uh, we 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 you know we were on the road. It wasn't easy for us to to do our voicemails. I did throw a grand to our boy, the Boston Strangler. He was the winner for the month. Um, I will say, he he just DM'd me and said, "Here's my Venmo." <laughs> like, like we didn't we didn't do the vote, you know. And I realized we didn't we didn't do it, but like I think that's okay. We'll get onto the vote next month because for May, I think we're yeah. gonna have a couple, uh, you know, a couple contenders. But April, the two weeks of April that we did this, it was clearly the Boston Strangler. <laughs> so he was just like, "Run me my money, bro." <laughs> so shout out to Joe. I, I sent him his grand. Uh, anybody, if you send in a a a voicemail video that gets played on the show, uh, you will technically be eligible to win a thousand dollars for the funniest story, best question, best. Uh, analogy best uh hypothetical whatever it is uh that we will vote on at the end of the month and if you are voted the funniest video of the month you get a thousand bucks from me so uh shout out to joe for you know an all-time story 
so we didn't get to do voicemails this week. We will make sure in the next couple of weeks we get through, you know, as many of the submissions as we can to make sure that we put all the best out there for the month of May. So win your money. Go to the KFC Radio uh, social media handles and click the links in the bio where you can submit. a. It's like a Google Doc where you fill out the form and send your video in and uh, win that money. And we'll see you guys next week. See you next week.